Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me for this timeless Pick a Card Tarot reading. Whenever you come upon this reading is when you're meant to receive it. And to choose your reading, you will choose from one of these crystals or one of the cards that I'm about to reveal. All right, for reading number one, we have this image along with Phosphositerite. And for reading number two, we have this image along with Selenite. And for reading number three, we have this image along with Baltic Amber. Let your intuition be your guide. Whichever crystal and or image you're most drawn to is probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to two or even all three of the readings as there may be additional guidance for you there. You'll find a link to all the readings in the description box below, as well as a list of all the cards that I use during the reading. If I have a link where you can find those cards, I'll include that as well. On November 15th, 2024, I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading all you have to do to qualify is give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type Beaver Moon in the comments below. Good luck. Hello, reading number one. Welcome. You chose this beautiful Phosphos Iterite, which is a stone known for its grounding properties. It's a helpful tool in emotional healing and self-discovery. It's known for its gentle, soothing energy and is believed to support emotional balance and promote inner peace, making it beneficial during stressful or transitional times. Spirituality, or spiritually, it's associated with enhancing connections to the higher realms, particularly aiding in communication with spirit guides and promoting deeper meditative states. It's also linked with the heart chakra and the third eye, encouraging compassion, forgiveness, insight into oneself and into others. It has a gentle vibration, is said to help release emotional blockages, and it assist in a more profound sense of purpose and brings about spiritual clarity. And it's just so beautiful. I believe it's a combination of phosphorus and iron, or at least that's what its name is. All right, and you chose the card, Cold Moon, Face Your Fears. Let's get some more information. What are you being asked to face your fears with? What fear are you being asked to face? All right. Goddess of the sea, it's time to come home. Abundance, purification, and ego. All right, that makes sense. Because we develop an ego to protect us. But many people, maybe even all of us, go through some phase where we start to realize that the ego kind of uh it it's like an overgrowth it's not that in and of itself it's a bad thing but too much of it it can get out of control and um debilitate us you know by keeping us afraid of situations it acts under the guise of help and protection but as i said it's like overgrown Let's get some more clues. What fear is reading number one being asked to face? 
deep sleep, resting and sleeping deeply. This may be to the point that your sleep is disturbed. Pluto rebirth. Okay, this is really interesting. I don't know that much about astrology, but I do know that at the time that I'm doing this reading, in a couple of weeks, Pluto is going to be moving from um, Capricorn to Aquarius. And this is significant because it happens about every 20 years so this is a huge change something that affects all of us and this card is you know with rebirth this is a transformation it's interesting you have deep sleep and it almost looks like they're in a little cocoon wrapped up in their blanket so I believe that this is foretelling of this rebirth that, and the catalyst is going to be the Pluto changing these houses, which takes place on November 19th or changing zodiacs. Again, I don't know that much about astrology, but Spirit, my guides, bring me little bits of information just at the right time that I'm meant to weave into your readings. And this is something that just came up yesterday and here Pluto's showing up in your reading. So definitely a synchronicity. So you're being asked to notice things that uh, control you. Not necessarily external forces, but internal kind of obsessions or thought processes, behaviors. What kind of things are controlling you and, and to begin to let go of things from the past. This is going to surface and just kind of come up naturally because of the cycle of things. But it's going to be very transformative to you. I love the first card says, come home. So it's like returning to the soul. All right, let's get some tarot. Let's see what other messages we can get about this transformation. Your guides are saying not to be scared. Obviously, this face your fears, but not to be scared of this transformation. It's going to liberate you. And that's Agnes. <laughs> you can see pictures of them on Instagram. Temperance, balance. I love this depiction of temperance. We see a little bit of everything with that laptop for work, carrots, vegetables, water, a book for reading. She's doing a yoga pose, which is the tree pose for balance, but she's also got some sweets and a martini and she also has her pet. So it's a little bit of everything, balancing everything. It's okay to partake in, in sweets and you know indulge but in moderation and having a balanced life balancing your life all right what other messages do you have for reading number one at this time Six of Cups. 
Yeah. Pluto asks you to let go of the past. And the Six of Cups is returning to the past. <laughs> Here comes Agnes back. How funny that she's returning just when I'm talking about returning to the past. So... Here we see a parent giving a child a plant. So letting go of some hold that the past has on you. Taking what you can that you can grow from and releasing anything that's restricting you or limiting you. Like I said, I'm hearing that you're being liberated. You know, you're gonna come out of this cocoon, so to speak, and get your, spread your wings. You're gonna feel freedom. Oh, that was quite a few. I feel that's too many, so I'm just going to put them back in the deck and keep shuffling. What other message do you have for reading number one at this time? All right, both of these want to come out. King of Wands. and Ace of Swords. There's this message of living your own truth, of having clarity of thought. This self-discovery, you know, with this returning home you're discovering something about yourself, your soul. You're unearthing yourself through this liberation, casting off old patterns, old beliefs. This feels very energetic as well. The Ace of Swords can you see all the little lines of electricity like lightning striking that sword or coming off that sword? You may even change roles to become someone that helps others, uh, counsels others, teaches others, advises others. Mentor. You may be a mentor to someone. As you've gone through this transformation, you now have this insight, this wisdom that can help someone else. Whoa, that card literally flew out of my hands onto the floor. Give me actually one. two cards. The Queen of Swords, which I'm not sure if I've ever drawn this card from this deck before. But nice that you get the Queen of Swords right after the Ace of Swords. and the Seven of Pentacles. So you're releasing some something that's been stressful, something about the ego that has been in overdrive, you know, I'm getting the sense of somebody who feels like, oh, but it's it has to be this way. It's kind of like a habit, but it's it's not really a habit. It's a pattern. It's 
this belief that something has to be a certain way and it, it may be more than one thing. Um, but feeling this discomfort when it, it's not that way to where it's kind of obsessive um, and you're, that's coming to light. You're beginning to understand it. And as you understand it and process it, you release it, which is bringing balance into your life. The understanding is coming from looking at your past. And it's giving you this knowledge, this insight. Some of you may even talk to somebody who helps you understand this, but I feel many of you are going to help others after you go through this process, this transformation, and you gain this wisdom. And then it's like you have this clarity of thought. You have these new ideas. You're now this mature person with not only clarity of thought, but you're strategic and not only are you healing an emotional blockage and growing spiritually but you're going to start to see changes in yourself because you're you're making space for new things you're as you let go of these I, I want to call them obsessive behaviors. I know there's probably another name, but, you know, it's just like this kind of control. It, again, it's coming from the ego, feeling like something has to be a certain way. And getting stressed out if it's not that way, whatever that is, you're releasing that. And you're going to start noticing things like your, you may, it may express itself in so many ways, like you're funnier, you just have a quicker wit. Um, you're, you may be better at games. You might notice that all of a sudden, you know, in the past, if you play checkers, you never won. Now you're getting it. There's just, there's actually, they're showing me like some, almost like gears in your head, just clicking and switching. And as a result of all of this, you're beginning to cultivate more resources because now you're this more strategic thinker. You're better at analyzing the situation. You have a better understanding. You see a big, the bigger picture. You're not as... Um, it's like you go through this whole process where you're, you are focused on yourself, but you're very aware of the external as well. Or in the past, you were only focused on yourself in, in a way of kind of keeping yourself safe. And now you're, you feel safe because you have this understanding of something and how it was creating this pattern of behavior in your life. And you're able to release that. This is huge. Like I said, this shift of Pluto moving from Capricorn to Aquarius, you know, it's going to stay in Aquarius for 20 years. It's been in Capricorn for 20 years. So think of something that you've been experiencing for the past 20 years changing it's huge this is a huge transformation you have experiencing this rebirth you coming out of the cocoon returning to your soul i absolutely love your message reading number one please let me know how this resonates i love to read your messages what you see in the cards, what you hear in the message, and how you connect that to your own life. But I see you becoming more compassionate. Your third eye chakra, your heart being in balance, you bringing your whole life into balance, releasing 
things that have been kind of restricting you, you're liberating yourself, and you're reaching this whole new potential. You're, you're going to begin to see things about yourself that you didn't realize that you had. And I think others will see it too as you begin to cultivate the, this new life. So happy for you. You're always welcome to reach out to me through my website if you feel you need additional guidance. I'm wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, reading number two. You chose the selenite shaped like a heart and selenite helps connect us to the higher realms. Some people believe that if you, if you hold a selenite rod in each hand, um, you'll see an angel. So it helps you connect to your angels, to your higher self, to your spirit guides. It's also a very soothing stone. It helps to create a sense of peace and calm. And the card you chose is Moon Goddess Higher Power. So there's a message that whatever it is you're asking for now, it's on its way. Whether it's something tangible or intangible. Let's get some more clues. message do you have for reading number one? The mirror. Self-reflection. Writer. Big picture. Okay. I love the synchronicities because I was just listening to something and we've all heard it before but literally I was just listening to it before this reading how what we think about what we feel what we put our attention on what we say it is reflected back to us our outer is reflecting our inner so there's a message about Claiming what you want. Claiming um, whatever it is that you desire as if you already have it. Putting yourself in that space, that energy. What does it feel like to have that thing that you want to have? And then taking action to do it. Just as I claim to pick up this card and then I, I follow through by doing it. I trust that that card is there. I trust that my hand can grab it. It's the same for everything else. It just, you have to match your belief as well as you can to pick something up. All right, let's get some more information. If you're a writer, then this is definitely a message about writing that book, writing that poem, writing that song. Light cleanse, clearing stuck energy. All right, this came out a few readings ago. So any disbelief, uh, and actually they're showing me creating moon water and cleansing yourself with that so you can get a clean jar, like a clean mason jar or clear container, preferably glass, something that has a lid, set it out at night where it can absorb the moon's energy and drinking that, drinking it with the belief that it's helping to manifest your desires and 
you know, what's interesting is we have the mirror reflect and then you have this light cleanse and they're showing me the moon which reflects the sun. So you can create a ritual or spell out of this. You can put your, you know, write down what it is that you want and put that on a piece of paper underneath the jar or if you want to write on the jar directly bless it charge it with the moon because you have the power of the moon goddess helping you at this time so do that and then drink it this is going to help you achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve whether it's getting past an emotional wound or finding the right career, whatever it is that you desire, put that on that jar with faith. You can call in a specific moon goddess if you wish, or just the energy of the moon herself. Wow, I really love your message. Okay, what other message do you have for reading number two at this time? Mid heaven pinnacle. All right, the mid heaven, excuse me, card is about how you're seen in the world and how your family, your community, your culture kind of shaped that. So, what is your idea of success? How will you know when you are successful and how much of that is informed by what you've sort of inherited from other people's beliefs? And again, this could be your community, your family, even your current, you know, circle of friends. Are, are you striving for something that others have told you you should strive for? Or is there some hidden dream in you? Is there some part of you that still wants you to shine light on it and grow it and nurture it? How is your success being reflected back to you? And how does it feel? So it's this card is asking you to examine all of that and notice if there's some part of you that is waiting to emerge and grow and flourish. All right, let's get some tarot cards and see what else we can find out. What other message do you have for reading? Oh, okay the page of swords so a new way of thinking so definitely casting off some idea that was that you kind of inherited from again family community culture society about what your life should look like versus what truly makes you happy what what is going to make you feel successful the king of wands High Priestess. The Page of Swords is literally the beginning of independent thinking. And the King of Wands, just look at this image. You have somebody telling someone else, right? This is this dogmatic 
belief system, this thing that you inherited. It's somebody else telling you, this is what you're supposed to do, and then you should do this, and you'll know this. But I see that you're breaking away from that, and then you have the high priestess, which is trusting in yourself, trusting in your t intuition. It's also about divination, psychic abilities, and divine inspiration, which we already have the selenite and the moon goddess higher power. So it's, you're being called out by your spiritual team to begin to break from the herd. Other message do you have? Okay. The Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is about a new job, a new career, or a new career adventure. It's being self reliant. Knight of Swords. This is bold action, swift action. It's more aggressive, not in a negative way, but you're just more self-assured now. I mean, look at the pose of all of these. This is definitely something new with the page and the knights. They're younger. So it could be a younger person, but in the sense of this reading, it's like um, a young project or something in its beginning. It's you're just starting out something. But for many of you, I see this being related to your work, your career or a creative project. Let's see what card is at the bottom of the deck. Two of Wands. Yeah, definitely something about work. Seeking fulfillment. Leaving behind these outdated beliefs and traditions uh, or if not outdated, they just don't apply to you. They're not in alignment with what you truly want and seeking your own fulfillment. And you are being blessed by higher powers. This is, this is coming to you as divine inspiration because this is something you're meant to do. This is an auspicious beginning. A Again, you're starting something new. Please let us know what it is that you're starting. If it's writing, please put that in the comments below because there's books here, there's books here. We have books here and they keep showing me these books. And of course, it doesn't have to be writing. It could just be that you're trusting your own inner wisdom rather than following somebody else's path. Reading at number one, I'm so excited for you. This, this is that exciting beginning of something new that has so much promise. And I do see you succeeding in this endeavor, whatever it is, because you are being blessed by this higher power, by the moon goddess. Please let me know how this resonates. I love to read your comments, the connections you make between the images you see, the message you hear, and your own personal life. You're always welcome to reach out to me for additional guidance. 
I'm wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number three. Welcome. You chose the Baltic Amber. If you've never had Amber, it's really interesting because it's tree resin. It's um, different than other crystals or stones, so it's not as dense. It's Even though this is big, it's very light. And it has this gentle, powerful energy that promotes physical and emotional healing. It's warm. It has an organic origin coming from fossilized tree resin. So it symbolizes ancient wisdom, vitality. It's great for healing rituals and rejuvenation. It clears negative energy. It's protective and grounding, promotes spiritual growth and connection and emotional stability. And the card you chose, Moonset Releasing, is really about surrender. It's releasing worry or whatever it is um, that you're working on. It's like what's done is done. And worrying about it isn't going to take you anywhere. They're showing me this um, quote that says, worry is like a rocking chair or, you know, it's, exp you're, you're using energy going, I can't remember the quote now, but it's like, you, you're not going to go anywhere, right? You're just going back and forth in a rocking chair. And so you're being asked to just kind of release it now. Trust that your higher self is taking care of it. And you can help this energy by decluttering, sweeping, mopping, dusting, releasing energy. You know, the, the Baltic Amber helps to clear out negative energy. So put it into a physical act and this will help also move that worry or concern, whatever it is that's on your mind, releasing it. And it could also be, you know, it may not be feel negative. It may feel more like wishing or hoping. Um, and it's the same thing. Release it. Surrender. Trust that your higher self, that your spiritual team is working to bring that thing towards you. All right, let's get some more. What message do you have for reading number three at this time? All right. Breaking into bloom. Sometimes you will break before you bloom. Time, liberation, understanding. I love the image. We have this third eye in the shape of the rose looking back at the person. Interesting. You are on the path of setting yourself free from something. And time is one of the key ingredients. This card is also about patience. We see that the third eye is already bloomed and looking upon the self, but in the heart is another bloom about to come out. Something is about to come out into the open, be revealed, understood, manifested, uh, but you just need time. We see these hourglasses on each side. All right, let's get some more information. What is reading number three meant to know at this time? Bountiful, healing, a scarcity mindset. All right. So.
So again, you may be feeling stuck or trapped or your mind might be wrestling, trying to understand something. And there's something happening, some understanding, some aha moment that's coming towards you. You're healing a scarcity mindset. Now, scarcity can apply to finances and resources. It can also apply to love. It's anything that you feel you don't have enough of. So whatever that is, that is what you are healing at this time. What message do you have for reading number three at this time? Retrograde review. Mm -hmm. So it could be something is coming back up. And the reason is so that you can heal it. And once you do that, it's going to open up channels of energy to flow abundance to you of whatever it is that you feel you're lacking. And, you know, this can be anything. It can be time that you feel you don't have enough time. It can be value, respect, not being recognized for your contributions, your ideas. So there's some situation that feels familiar and you may even be asking yourself like, why does this always happen? Or I never have this thing. And it's like this thing keeps happening and the reason is so that you can heal it once and for all and begin to experience that bounty. Seven of Swords. That just flipped out. Nine of Wands. King of Wands. That card just seems to like to come out. It's... I feel that you're changing your plans for something. Perhaps there's some type of delay and you are now coming up with a new strategy. You may have had a moment of indecision or some kind of interruption or something unexpected that has now caused you to change your plans to come up with a new plan. But with this nine of wands, I see you conquering that. What other message do you have for reading number three at this time? King of Cups, two kings. The King of Cups is calm, cool, and collected. Stable, emotionally stable, even. It's like you are there's something happening within you, giving you this understanding. You know, with this moon set releasing kind of this acceptance or surrender and trusting that your higher self has your back and is working to help you, that whole mindset giving you this calmness, this coolness, it takes you out of this defensive stance. Perhaps you felt like 
you didn't you weren't qualified perhaps the scarcity is feeling like you aren't enough so you feel like you have to constantly prove yourself but it puts you in this defensive position and now i see you in this powerful position being empowered your whole mindset changing your whole energy changing being more diplomatic Other message do you have for reading number three at this time? Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles is enjoying one's work. So again, I feel like there's something some area of your life it may be work it may be uh hobbies or interests um something creative but it's like this feeling of feeling like um i'm hearing uh imposter syndrome like you're deceiving you feel like you're a fraud or some of you may actually feel like others are deceiving you but i feel for the majority of you there's this sense of not feeling worthy like feeling like you're a fraud you know they're showing me for example somebody who's painted a, a picture they've painted an art show and they're getting ready for an exhibition and they feel like, oh my gosh, what if this isn't good enough? What if people don't like it? But the exhibition date is now. They've already printed the invitations. They've already gone out. They already have the catering, everything. You know, at this point, there's no more painting to be done. The artwork has to be to the gallery and hung. And it's just, you just have to trust that the right people see it and just releasing that I see you know you conquering that feeling of not being enough or not being ready and being more strategic it's it's like these two are two voices in your head um, this is more like a critical voice like you should have done this you weren't ready you know but the nine of wands i see you conquering it and you surrendering you releasing that negative voice negative energy and then taking on this more calm serene loving nurturing aspect you have both aspects within yourself so you're releasing this critical voice you're embracing your nurturing voice and you're beginning to enjoy your work you're doing you're now and again this is an example but let's go back to the paintings you're painting what you want to paint instead of what you think people want you to paint but this could be anything you're doing you're enjoying your work you're doing it because you want to do it because you enjoy it not because somebody else you think somebody else wants you to wow i really love that let's see what the last card is on the in the deck two of pentacles balance so you're beginning to have more balance in your life which is what the king of cups is it's emotional balance you know and we talked about with the baltic amber emotional stability having this sense of calm and equilibrium and here we see somebody balancing on a seesaw 
you can also think about balancing your checkbook, balancing your resources as a result. But what I feel is you feel more stable, more strong, because you're really beginning to enjoy what you do. And this is going to help you release this feeling of scarcity in whatever form you're experiencing it. Reading number three, so happy for you. If you are working on an art show, please let me know. Um, but whatever it is that you're doing, we would like to hear it. I love to read your comments. You're always welcome to reach out to me if you feel you need additional guidance. And I'm wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.